Can't you drive a bit faster? Yes, sir. Never mind to spend the night in a ditch. Fastest confounded fog. You wouldn't believe it possible in the middle of summer, would you? It's quite unnatural. Tis the moors, sir. No laws of nature out here. Francis is an old wives' tale. My father didn't think so, sir. He hated and feared the moors. For years he forbade us to set foot upon them. Strange, I never heard that. You were a wee lad at the time, sir. But I often wondered what it was that kept a brave man off a section of his own estates. <laughs> In my opinion, he probably buried his conscience out here. My father was a God-fearing man, Mr. Robert. But he's going to be furious if I'm late for my own bachelor party. Look here, Cyril, can't you get the old girl to go? <laughs> Two such netherworld creatures on your wedding night. Beelzebub, Moloch, Belial. All names that men have given to Satan. Well, is it possible that Robert Penrose has actually encountered the evil one himself? Or was this violent incident the start of some, some monstrous practical joke conceived by the young man's friends? Or by his enemies? Or perhaps a glimpse of tonight's players will give you a clue. Mr. Ronald Howard. Mr. Henry Daniel. Mr. Torrin Thatcher. Miss Finton Myler. And Mr. Richard Keel. Impossible to guess, you say? Very well. Let's turn back the clock and pick up our young bridegroom before the start of this fateful journey. But I warn you, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a faint heart, tune away, because it may stop in your throat as sure as my name is Boris Garlow. I never expected us to share another bottle. I toasted your father in this very room 35 years ago. There's been a teal to drink to every Penrose wedding for five generations. Mm -hmm. And you don't intend to let an old family tradition die, eh, Teal? It seems to me there's precious little left of tradition now, sir. I wish you success and happiness. Teal. It's not right for old friends to behave like this. 
Anger rests in the bosoms of fools. I mean, you taught me that when I was scarcely able to walk. All right, I'll be fair with you. I'll admit I've been an insufferable young fool. If you'll admit you've been an obstinate old tyrant. I wish you every success and happiness, Mr. Robert. And to your young lady, the same. Thank you, Teal. To Laura. Go ahead, break it to you. Ah, oh, you old bulldog. And I wonder if you realize what a bad time you've been giving me lately. Oh, if I've forgotten my place, sir, I ask pardon. If I really believed that, I'd have to send for a doctor. I'll take it, sir. Good. Hadwick Castle. Oh, just one moment, miss. It is Miss Dunning, sir. Oh, good. Thanks to you. Hello, darling. I was just going to phone you. Liar. You adore the idea of my chasing you. I should be angry. Where have you been all afternoon? Riding. Well, I had to do something to quieten my nerves until... Um, pom, 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 dee, dee, dee. What are you doing? Fitting my gown. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> How do you know, silly? You haven't seen it yet. In my imagination, I'm standing right beside you. Scarcely a breath divides us. Robert, what a positively improper idea. I'm blushing. You look ravishing when you blush. Robert. Hmm? Yes, darling? Must you go to that awful stag party tonight? Yes, I, I'm afraid I'm stuck with it. I mean, I, I can't let Toddy and the boys down. I don't like Toddy Mills, darling. He's a nasty little trickster with a sadistic sense of humor and the morals of a goat. I just don't like him. Well, that's fairly obvious, darling. But don't worry. Look, if it'll make your mind any easier, I'll take uh, Teal along to chaperone me. Oh? I thought you two weren't speaking. No, we've actually just declared a truce. And I don't fret, my sweet. And say good night. This is the last time we'll ever be apart. Good night, darling. Good night, darling. Teal. I wonder if you'll, well, help me through this stag affair tonight. And my wedding. For old time's sake. I was hoping you'd ask me, sir. You'll be the envy of every woman in London tomorrow, Miss Dunning. Bless you and good luck. The gown is breathtaking, Miss Grace. Thank you. Of course it is. On you. <laughs> good night. Good night. Come and sit down, Teal. Uh, I think I know what you think. You expected me to marry a duchess, didn't you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you'll learn to love Laura in time. She's got everything in a woman a man could possibly desire. Heaven knows what she saw in me, though. You're a Penrose, sir. Oh, she could have had half the title heads of Europe at her feet. There's Hadwick Castle. Not to mention the money your father left you. Money? What's that for? It's only a means to happiness, Teal. And whom better could I spend it on than Laura? I doubt your father would approve of your squandering your fortune, sir. <laughs> squandering? Oh, don't look so dour, Teal. Laura will probably surprise you by changing me into a responsible family man. Ah, that'll be the day. <laughs> oh, Teal, wait. I want to ask a special favor of you. You know very well I, I couldn't run this place without you. I take it as a great honor if you would stay on here and look after us. Very well, Mr. Robert. I'll stay on. Thank you to you.
heaven's name, tell him to go slow. He'll kill us all. The fog has no secrets for Mr. Stix. Now, come off it, sir. Who put you up to this stunt? Toddy? Toddy? I sort of expected some such hijinks. Now, be a good fellow. And, uh, ask your friend to drive back and pick Cyril up. And I'll relieve you of those rather ugly-looking toys. Good heavens! The maniac's serious. You'll soon learn how serious, young man. All right. If this is a real kidnapping, I won't waste any more time. How much do you want? How much have you got? That's none of your business. Keep it with you. Can't you see he means business? Never thought I'd see the day when a pen rolls with knuckle under. Shut up, Teal! You want to get us both murdered? <laughs> You've got a head on him, is Mr. Robert. Not much of a stomach, but a head for the sins of things. Very well. In real and personal property, I've got roughly half a million pounds. Half a million? Yes. You release us unharmed, and you can have any part of it. Everything? Everything. It's not enough. Sticks? Out. He's exhausted. Leave him alone, will you? You have half a minute to get him on his feet or say his prayers. Sticks. Listen carefully. I think I know where they're taking us. It's not far now. Where is it, Teal? We'll have to get us inside the place before dawn. We can't let that happen. Inside where, Teal? What do you know about this Moloch? When I give the signal, you snatch his torch and use it to hold the creature off with. While I go for his pistol, he hasn't loaded the other one yet. We may have a chance, but if we fail... All rested and ready to go, Mr. Teal? Then let us not tarry. The dawn holds no welcome for the likes of Master Styx and me.
remember this place, Mr. Penrose. The old blockhouse, a relic of Gothic days. What makes you think I remember it? When you were six, you wandered off onto the moors. Your father found you playing here. It was the first time you ever saw fear in his face. He beat you. You never knew why. But every time you attempted to return, you always remembered that look in his face. How did you know that? Perhaps we can, we can still make a bargain with him. Once he gets inside that place, sir, we're lost. Now, for the love of heaven, into my face. Take a good look and tell me what you see. You dare not admit what you suspect, even to yourself. But you've seen things, Mr. Penrose, the way those torches lit up, the strange way in which your overseer died. Now, 
ask yourself, what good is money to the likes of Master Styx and me? Then, then what do you want? Vengeance. Vengeance? Why? What for? I don't know you. I never set eyes on you before yesterday. The sins of the father shall be visited upon the child. Sins of the fathers? What could my father ever have done to you? Your father acquired this estate long before you were born. But how? Do you know? Yes. He bought it. <laughs> you have apparently not yet discovered the secret of your chamber. There, in the center. As you know, these are the ruins of a Gothic stronghold. Prisoners were kept in this underground dungeon. The Goths also took refuge here from the marauding Saxons. Therefore, in that well... What has this got to do with me? Your father drowned the rightful owner of this estate... No, you're and lying! ...and his property and position. Liar! My father could never kill for money or property. Oh, he could and he did. Who? He killed me. No. No. Why, then, did your father forbid anyone to come to this part of the estate and finding his young son here, why did he beat him so savagely? What was it? He feared he might discover. No, no, it's too fantastic. <laughs> there are more things in heaven and earth, my dear Mr. Penrose, than are dreamed of in your philosophy. I could not come back during your father's lifetime. I had not earned the right, but I was permitted to return on the eve of your marriage to take my rightful place as master of Hadwick. You expect me to believe such nonsense? But Laura Dunning shall still be mistress of Hadwick, just as planned. The lovely Miss Denning shall be a glowing tribute to my successful return from beyond. She shall be my bride. No, no, you're mad. You're mad. I don't care whether you're alive or whether you're dead. You'll never get her. Sticks. I merely wish to show you an important aspect of your dilemma. I shall leave you now to contemplate your prospects. No, no, Monarch, wait. Please, I'm willing to cooperate. Anything within reason. Please, Monarch. Monarch, release Laura. I'll do anything. Monarch. I should dislike entrusting you to the tender care of Master Styx, Miss Dunning. So you will utter no word or sound. You understand? Splendid. You may remove the gag, Master Styx. Gently. Such a delicate treasure must be handled with care. <laughs> Laura, are you all right? Laura, answer me. Monarch, let me see her. Please let me see her. All in good time, Master Robert. First, you must take some nourishment. Recognize your own silver service, do you? Eat well. Preserving one's strength, especially when the food and wine are from one's own cellar. What's that? Where did 
that pen come from? That wasn't there a second ago. You devil. At last you concede my identity. Splendid. Bodes well for the speedy termination of your difficulties. Sign. And you are a free man. Simple power of attorney. Lacking only your signature to give me full control of all your money and all your property, real and personal. Your signature, please. And if I refuse? Sign. Why do you hesitate? The last time we talked, you were willing to do anything for your beloved. How can I be sure? How can I trust you to set her free? Hark to this dandy. The wine must be a potent brew to fire such courage in such a lily liver. Sign, or you'll soon be seeing in the dark like Master Sticks. What kind of fraud is this? You think you can drive me half insane with fear and exhaustion? Then trick me out of everything I possess? You prefer to die wealthy? Oh, I see. You were going to kill us both, whether I signed it or not. So be it. Sticks. Can you hear me? No. No, they've gagged you again. Well, look, Laura, if you can hear me, tap on the stone floor with your heel. Have they harmed you? One tap for yes, two for no. Did Moloch phone, say he was me? They couldn't have kidnapped you from your bedroom. A monster. Sticks. Good heavens! What black magic enabled them to get you here without being seen? All right, my dear, save your strength. I haven't signed yet because they'll kill us both the moment I do. They'd have to. They could never trust us not to go to the police. But they'll be back with that paper. And when they do, I'll try to be ready for them. on the floor if you hear me. Laura, darling, the, the bolt on the door is jammed. But 
I'll find something and I'll have you out of here in a very few minutes. Just hold on, dearest. means the devil will be back very soon with that paper. Maybe there's still a chance. Look, darling, I think I've got an idea. I'm going to sign, then pretend I've gone mad and killed myself in the well. When they're convinced I'm gone, I'll come back for you.
Hungry. The time for hospitality has passed. I'll see you back in hell before I sign that. Don't try my patience any further, Penrose. I'm offering you your life. You're offering me my death warrant. Sign. Never! Sign! Or I'll send sticks to your lovely Miss Dunning. Sticks? No. No, Mark, no. No, please. Call him back. Please, call him back! Save her, then. Now, stop him as you promised. Sticks! All right. Now, keep your part of the bargain. Release us. Your release is only seconds away.
Sorry? Heaven's name, tell him to go slow. He'll kill us all. The fog has no secrets from Mr. Styx. You release us unharmed, and you can have any part of it. Everything? Everything. It's not enough. Watch how you talk to me, Riley. What did I say? I didn't say anything. Don't be so sensitive, Joe. Joe's always so touchy when he's worried. I'm worried. The way you're belting that bottle and the job not finished. Well, finish it then. She's waiting inside. Go on, get it over with. Joe's soft when it comes to women, aren't you, Joe? What about that chauffeur? What if he talks? Ask him. What about that chauffeur? Cyril's my problem. You two just finish what you're hired to do. He's worried about me belting that bottle. Joe's worried someone might find those bodies. No one's been near this hellhole for a hundred years. The natives in these parts are a lot of superstitious fools. Even the boy's father believes this place was haunted. Pour yourself another dose of courage and get on with it. Oh, look, I've been thinking. I don't see how you can take over Penrose estate, even with that power of attorney. I don't plan to take it over. But don't forget, I'm his overseer. I can have it bled white and be out of the country before anyone's the wiser. Oh. What's your cover story? Penrose and his bride eloped. They've gone on an extended honeymoon. I haven't any idea where. This little piece of paper is going to make up for years of humiliation. This piece of paper is going to... Make me a millionaire. Not until you sign an agreement to pay off, mister. What mister. are you doing, Joe? He just double-crossed that fellow Penrose he's known all his life. How do we know we'll get the rest of our money? <laughs> yeah. I think he's got something, matey. You could do that to a kid you've known all your life. He could do it to us. You must be pretty sick, Keel. Why didn't you just do them in? Drop them down the well yourself. Yes, why go to all this trouble? No simple murder would solve my wounds. I've been planning this for years. Wounds? I doubt you'd understand. Rose to the spirit. Corrosion of the pride. Have you ever thought what it's like to be a man's man and live in a household where they give you orders day after day. This is my day of reckoning. Make him put the deal in writing, Riley. Yes. And since we'll all hang if they ever catch us, I say we share and share alike. What you say, partner?
I'm real. Just as real as those would-be monsters. Oh, darling. <laughs> at, at first I thought it was another one of Tony's practical jokes, but it was so horrible. <laughs> then when they brought me... <laughs> it's all over now, darling. We're safe. We're really safe. 